Hi, this is Sharon Strover, and I'm here to give you a very quick guided tour to some of the research that our group did last year examining the Russian IRA Facebook ad pages and what possible impact they might have had on people who saw them. We had a team composed of several people from different corners of the university, a core group of communications oriented graduate students did a lot of the work that I'll talk about today, including our postdoc, Erman Alvarez. And I'm gonna really focus on three of the four projects that you see on our poster. I'm not gonna talk about project number three very much because we're, that is very much still in process. But project one is already completed. And project one, as you can see here, uh, resulted in a paper that's published in the International Journal of Communication, looking at the themes of Russian placed Facebook advertisements and specifically the emotion that the Facebook ads tried to convey. Our point of departure here is that interacting with a lot of the social media messages that the IRA place depend not on any sort of appeals to sense of logic or a sense of what's true or false, but rather they appeal rather immediately to emotions and elicit emotional reactions that compel people to share those pages more broadly. We looked at the sentiment in the ads and found that most of the Russian Facebook ads placed uh, as identified to the US Congress were in fact positive in their sentiment. And that positive sentiment leads to more clicks and more sharing as well. We suspect that that positive sentiment was very effective in terms of enlisting people's believability with the Facebook ads. And we followed this up with another study, study two, which is under review right now at a journal called, the piece is called Mind Games. And in that piece, we looked at sentiment in those Facebook ads and compared it to sentiment on Twitter. And we found very different sorts of sentiment in the messages. And when we broke down the sentiment by platform, partisanship, and racial identity, we found that the Russians used a much more negative appeal when they were impersonating left trolls, i.e. targeting leftists, and especially when they were, part, uh, when they were targeting racial identities such as being Black or representations of Black. So race was targeted and subject to somewhat stronger forms of manipulation than we saw was the case for right-leaning trolls or more conservative-leaning trolls. The last study I'm going to briefly talk about here is project number four. This is being prepared for submission to a conference in November. The title of the paper is Reverse Engineering Political Protest. And in this paper, we're looking at a subset of Russian ads that included what we call efficacy statements. Efficacy, sta efficacy statements basically tell people what to do, where to go, what to do, how to protest, basically. So they gave people a very direct set of actions they wanted people to take, specifically join protests. These were targeting different protests all over the country. We chose a protest in Houston, which ended up having a fair amount of media coverage. And the, it, although inspired by the Russian IRA, it actually did elicit people on both on, on protesting sides and counter protesting sides. So what our research sought to do was find people who responded to these ads and to understand more deeply from an ethnographic qualitative perspective, what was it in the ads and in the messages that compelled them to take to the streets. 
This is a very different kind of research. We haven't seen anybody do anything quite like this right now, but certainly in as much as protest is a very prominent part of social life now in 2020, and in as much as we know there are a lot of governments attempting to place messages to influence the political scene in the US, we think this research will yield some very important insights. So that's a, a, the appetizer course to our Facebook re and Twitter research. Hope to talk to you in person at some point. Thank you.